Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At the risk of the messenger being shot for the message, I've come with just this simple thought. It is winter. There, I didn't think there'd be a lot of amens and running the aisles and glory hallelujahs and Pastor Jack is in Florida because it is winter. I know the calendar says it's March. <laughs> Seems like already 2019 is flying by at an unprecedented pace, at least in my life. And I know this morning, according to the little saying, I sprung my clocks ahead an hour, but it still doesn't feel much like spring. <laughs> and so with what it might feel like stating the obvious and the natural, what I want to do is help us to understand that somebody spiritually is in winter. Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, everything there is a season a time to every purpose under heaven. And we know that just like the seasons of nature, there are seasons in the spirit that we all walk through from time to time. And knowing that, it seems a bit unfortunate that God moved upon Moses and told him to write these words in Genesis 8 and 22 because now it's forever settled. And he said, while the earth remaineth, there will be seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and... Thank you, Moses. <laughs> and day and night shall not cease. Now, I don't know <laughs> about everybody else, but you might have picked up on the fact already that I am not a particular fan of winter. <laughs> I feel like what Shakespeare might have felt like when he wrote those opening words in Richard III, that it was the winter of our... <laughs> discontent. <laughs> Seems like every winter is my winter of discontent, and I feel like as a Canadian, that's my right. <laughs> the days are too short. Thank God we're moving out of that season, but I... Uh, huh. Everybody know that joy of waking up in the morning and it's dark? And you come home from work at the end of the night and it's dark? And the whole time in between, you're stuck in a cubicle somewhere. <laughs> and you go three, four months of the year not seeing the light of the day. That's not healthy. That's winter. <laughs> it's cold. Now, Brother Arnold would say that's a spot for an amen. <laughs> it's cold. Now, maybe some of you are, I don't know, wired differently than I am, but those minus 35 days the last little while have got me dreaming of Pakistan all over again. It's like, I'll take the bullets, Lord. <laughs> Just get me somewhere warm. I just don't like winter. Everything seems dead or at the best, dormant lying in wait. Physically, winter takes its toll on us. I myself have been preparing for hibernation and just forgot to lay down for a while. <laughs> but <laughs> Mentally, winter takes its toll on us. Got quiet. And walking through a season of spiritual winter is no different. In the spiritual winter, you come into service and Al's running the aisles and I'm hooping and hollering and acting crazy, but everything seems dark. <laughs> seems like there's a coldness that has just kind of settled in to your walk with God and your response 
in church services. And sometimes, sometimes it can feel like all those promises, all those words that have been spoken over you are dead or at best, they're dormant. Just no sign. It seems like the miracle couldn't survive the harshness of the season you're walking through. Now spring, spring's a different story. <laughs> spring I can get behind. <laughs> spring is about life. Spring is about growth. It's about renewal. Spring is about revival. Sure, you get a little bit of rain in the spring. But after all, you know, I, I was taught as a little child, April showers bring... Hey, good, I'm glad I'm not the only one who was taught that. I thought that would have been really embarrassing if that was like a Nova Scotia thing and nobody else heard about that. April showers bring May flowers. There's a purpose when it rains in the spring. It can be a bit inconvenient in the moment, but given that everything else is so nice and the fact that we know that rain is going to bring forth harvest, we say it's all right. <laughs> it's okay. Let it rain. There's purpose to the rain. And that's why God said that, that my word, my promises, my word to you is like that rain. Spring rains bring life to the world and my word brings life to the believer. Spring rains bring forth sustenance that will keep you and, and feed you and my word does the same. Like the spring rain, God said, my word never returns void. That rain comes down and hits the ground and it doesn't go back up to heaven, but it brings forth the purpose from which it fell. And God said, my word is just the same. The rain refreshes, it cleanses, it gives life, and so does my word. <laughs> it's not long after the spring rain, grass starts shooting up. Isn't that a happy day? Uh, you know, I've, I've established many times that I'm a bit odd. <laughs> but I love kind of standing in the, in the window around springtime and staring at the trees, waiting for that first little green bud to start coming out. Whew, that's an exciting day. And what is just a bud one day, the next day is a little bit more and a little bit more. And it's not long until the greenness of life is all around. Just a little bit of rain brings forth such amazing results. Rain soaks in and brings forth life almost immediately. And spiritually, the spring is... <laughs> It's, it's the same. It's an amazing season. Spiritual spring is the time when God sends his word and, and it finds what Jesus called the good ground. Hmm. And it soaks right in to that need in our life. Spiritual spring, it's a time of spiritual growth. Spiritual spring is... A time of life, renewal, and revival. You know, I don't think it was an accident that it was almost two years ago. It's later this month, two years ago, in the spring of 2017, that Pastor Woodward started his powerful sermon series that started as one message and grew and grew and grew when he preached to us about revival because spring and revival go together. Spiritual spring is a gift from God. <laughs> the evangelist comes in and preaches about healing and immediately, as God's word soaks into the need of the believer, there is a result. The next test shows you've been healed. You've been, 
I don't know how it happened, but it's gone. And even as the word is going forth, you begin to hear the testimony of how the pain is gone. I can't feel it anymore. God has done the work. In spiritual spring, there's tongues and interpretation go forth. It says, I will provide for your every need. And and the next day, you get a promotion you didn't even apply for. That's spiritual spring. The word goes forth and it soaks you into the soil and immediately life comes forth. God's word doesn't return to him void, but like that spring rain, there's an immediate transference and an immediate result in spring. I love spring. I love spring. I want to dance and shout and holler for spring. But it is winter. (laughs) Now, I don't know if I've successfully depressed anybody, (laughs) but that's not my point. What I want us to realize is just like spring has its purpose and we rejoice over God's purpose in spring, winter spiritually has a purpose. (laughs) Rather than performing Canada's national pastime, which is complaining about the weather, we can embrace the purpose of winter and allow God to give us strength through the season we're in. Not wishing we were in another season, but receiving what God has for us in the season we are in. (laughs) See, when God said to Isaiah, my word goes forth like the rain, and it, it, it brings forth all the blessings. That, that's not all he said. If we can throw that back up there, Isaiah 55 and verses 10 and 11. Notice what he says here. He says, for as the rain comes down and returns not hither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud and may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So my word shall go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. And so many times that's what we read and that's what we can hear. But, but I missed something there. He said, as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven. You see, I understand how, how rain feeds the earth, but I'm not really expecting God to say, Snow brings forth and buds. Because the winter, the snow seems to destroy everything. I've got a bush right kind of on the corner of my property. And the top of it's probably nine, nine feet tall. And I just noticed the other day, cleaning the end of my driveway out, that there's no bush left. It's covered in snow. I don't feel like that is healthy for the bush. (laughs) But God said, the rain and the snow water the earth. The rain and the snow bring forth life. The rain and the snow give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. See, the spring rains aren't enough just to water the fields. Spring rains by themselves aren't heavy enough to fill all the wells so that the people have all that they need to get through the dry time of summer. The spring rains alone don't raise the levels of the rivers so that the floodplains of Israel would would be watered to bring forth life in the next season. But the spring rains plus the melting snow accomplished all those things. 
We love spring rain. <laughs> Woo, rain's got a purpose. Growth is coming. It soaks in immediately. And we love it when God's word goes forth like rain and, and soaks into the parched part of our hearts and brings forth a miracle instantly. But sometimes God said, I send my word like snow. And snow doesn't soak in immediately. Snow piles up. And if you live in New Brunswick, it piles up and up and up. Till if you're like me, you're praying before you pull out of your driveway because you got no idea if anything's coming. It's just an act of faith coming to church. <laughs> but God in his wisdom knew the rain that the people can survive with in the spring. It's not going to be enough to sustain them through the summer. So God gives us a winter season. And oh, we love it. We love it when the rain just soaks right in and it feels so good. But God knows there's times when we need snow that's going to build up and build up and build up. But in the right time, we'll accomplish Something amazing. Oh, we love spiritual spring. I, man, I get excited. Every meeting I go to, I just love hearing the testimonies. I love sharing the testimonies. I love shouting about the testimonies. When God lets me, I just like to preach faith and nothing but faith because without faith, none of the rest of it works. I just love it. But God's just heavied my heart with this message. Sometimes his word goes forth like rain and there's immediate change, but sometimes he still sends his word. The promise is still there. It's not drought. It's not summer. His word is still coming forth into your life. But it's purpose its purpose can be forgotten because it doesn't penetrate now. It builds up for the right moment. Spring rains are amazing because they give a now blessing. But when you're in winter, don't turn your back on the snow just because it's not a now blessing. There is a later blessing that comes when God's word flows like snow. Somebody needs to understand this, and this is basically it. All of this is just to say this little point. God's lack of an answer, or rather a lack of an answer the way you thought it should or might be, does not mean he doesn't care. Somebody's been carrying that burden for too long. You've been walking into this house feeling like every time I come and don't get the answer that I want or that I think I need, it must mean there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with God. But it's not true. It is winter. And in winter, his word comes. But it's falling like snow. And the purpose of the snow is not immediately understandable. God has sent his word over this church and he sent it to you. I know men of God have prayed over you. I know you've heard the word of the Lord spoken over you and things have not 
changed. That doesn't mean they were wrong or that you're wrong or that God is wrong. It doesn't mean that the miracle's not coming. All it means is that it is winter and the snow is piling up building up until the day that God says now is the moment somebody just needs to understand hear this deferred victory does not mean defeat. Delayed victory does not mean defeat. Second Peter 3 and 9, it's going to be on the screen, but I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Remember, deferred victory does not mean defeat. And in the New Living Translation, it simply says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people might think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He's not slack. He's not slow. He's waiting. And he's got purpose in this winter season. I've just come with a simple message to unburden my heart to somebody. Because I've been feeling this the last little while. That there are people in this church who are right in the middle of spiritual winter. I know nobody wants to jump up and say, yay, it's me, Lord. But I know it, and you know it. You've been feeling that, that coldness. And you've been wondering why. Why, why, why? Why isn't it working? Why isn't it coming? Why? How can so many people be wrong? The man of God's not wrong. The word of God's not wrong. You're not out of line. You're not out of place. You're not sinning some secret sin that, that like, I'm not here like Job's friends trying to get you to examine your life and find the thing that's missing. What I'm telling you is there are seasons in your walk with God. And the season you're in right now, it is winter. And the reason things aren't going the way you think they ought to is because God is storing up those promises. The word is flowing. His power is flowing. But it's coming like the snow being reserved for the day that he has designed it for. I wouldn't want to embarrass anybody, but I know and you know that all around us in this church tonight, there are people who've walked through winters spiritually. They've received words from God and they've received promises and things that have been spoken over their lives and they've received it as a word from God, but then the answer didn't come. Things didn't change. Maybe a time frame that they thought it was going to happen in has passed and, and now they're just, they, they were left wondering, what about my promise, God? What about my promise? You said. <laughs> but now that they've been through it, Now that they hold that promise in their hands, now that they've gotten a hold of what God had been promising all along, those same people will tell you, I wouldn't change a thing because the winter of my disconnect allowed me to fully appreciate what God was doing in my life. 
and that same testimony in a hundred different ways is all over this room tonight. Oh, I wanted it my way, but when God did it his way, it was sweeter than I could have ever imagined. It may be winter, but don't dismay at the lack of God's response. It's only seeming like that. But realize God's word is going forth in our services. And as you're praying in the faith that you can muster together, even if it's just as a grain of mustard seed, the Lord said that little faith can accomplish much. As men of God speak over you and pray over your situation, and it doesn't happen, somebody just needs to claim that's just snow. It's piling up because it's winter right now. But spring is on the way. And when God releases that promise, (laughs) oh, it's cold now. But when God releases that promise, things are going to change. Things are going to be different. It is winter, and I accept that some of the things God has spoken to me are not today's promise, but they're tomorrow's promise. One of my favorite passages of scripture. Again, yes, I'm weird. I love it when when Job comes to God and finally just kind of throws down the gauntlet and says, What's up, God? Like, what's happening? I, I'm sick and tired of every everything's gone. And, you know, in the Curtis paraphrase, God's just like, you're going to get up in my face about this? Where were you when I created the earth? Oh, I just love that. Now, that's not John 3.16. That's not Acts 2.38. I don't know. There's something about that that just speaks to me. (laughs) It's like, hey, God, I get it. I, I feel like you've let me down, but if I could see from your eyes... If I could see it from your point of view, I'd realize you've never failed me. You've never forgotten me. There's blessings I don't even think about that you put here just for me. And in all of that diatribe of God saying, hey, look at what I've done. And then you're going to tell me that I haven't done anything for you. Right in the middle of that, he says, hey, have you seen the storehouse? Where I keep the snow. And God said this, I reserve it. I'm saving it for the day of battle and war. And I just feel like that's where somebody is right now. It's winter. And you've been receiving the word. And it doesn't seem like it's been working. But that's because it's coming as snow. But God is letting that build up and pile up. And he's reserving it. He's saving it. Because you don't see what's coming around the corner. But he does. And you're going to need a word that not only will answer your current situation, but it's going to win the battle. And not just the battle, it's going to win the war. There is a fall that is coming into your spiritual atmosphere that when the season changes from winter to spring, it will release all those promises and it's not going to come down like the sweet pitter-patter of a spring rain, but it will be a flood that will overflow the bank.
banks. It'll be like the flood that hit Fredericton last year. It'll rearrange things. It'll alter things. Nothing will be the same. It's going to move things. It's going to shift things. It's going to turn some things upside down and it will turn some things right side up. It'll tear some things apart and it will build some things back up inside of you. When God changes your season from winter into spring, the promises that are causing you pain and question right now will be the very thing that propels you into your greatest victory in the next season. I'm going to ask us to stand together. Music team, I'd just, just like just Ryan to come back for now, and we might do more later, but I just feel I need as many people praying as possible tonight. I wish my words could convey just the burden I've been feeling over this simple, simple thought. But somebody here, it's all on the line here tonight and you just need to understand. It's winter. I know it's been long. I know it's been harsh. I know it's been cold and not every promise, not every hope even still seems possible. But I've just come to tell somebody, don't stop trusting in God. He hasn't forgotten. He hasn't forsaken. But this winter has a purpose. He's building promise over you that will allow you to possess what he has for you in the next season. I don't know that that's going to make it any easier to walk through the rest of this winter. But at least you can do it with your head held high knowing God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. Oh, it's still tough. (laughs) Oh, it's not the way I would have planned it, but... But God, with some understanding tonight, I'm doing just what the song said. I'm making room for you. Jesus, I I really want you to be Lord in my life. And Pastor Matt said it so eloquently this morning. It's really a question of who's leading who. I'd like to pull the reins, God, and pretend that I'm somehow in charge and, and you're the horse pulling this chariot so that I could direct you to the right when I see an easier path. That's not the way it is, Lord. As Pastor Mike preached last week, I'm yoked together with you. We're walking through this journey together. And tonight, Jesus... I just need enough faith to trust you through the rest of this winter. I don't know how long the spiritual winter will last, but tonight, Jesus, my cry (laughs) my cry is that you'd give me enough faith 
to overcome my disbelief sometimes and help me to keep walking with you until that day. Until that day when this winter turns to spring and every promise that you've spoken, every word that I've grabbed hold of, every miracle that I've proclaimed, every prophecy that I've uttered will be released. And Jesus, my heart is broken tonight because I feel the burden of someone here tonight. It may only be one. (laughs) There may be 300 people wondering what I'm talking about, but I know I've carried the burden for the one tonight. And there's somebody here, Jesus, who needs to just come to grips with the fact that you haven't left them. No matter what it might feel like, you haven't forgotten them. But you're right here with them in the winter. And the reason you're holding back is because you're being patient for our benefit, knowing the battle that's to come. And I pray you do for them like I'm asking you to do for me. Give them the faith to walk with you until the winter ends and the spring comes. It's not going to be easy because pride likes to get in our way. But I know there's at least one, and I, if I'm honest with myself and honest with you, I feel like there are a number of people here tonight. You've been walking in the dark. You've been walking in the cold, long night of winter. But there's purpose. There's purpose. And I'd like to pray with you. And this church family would like to pray with you just to give you the strength you need to just keep walking. And if there's anybody who would just be brave enough tonight to say, I've been walking through winter. I invite you to come towards the front right now there's anybody who'd just be brave enough spiritually to say hey I've been feeling that thank you to those who are responding I don't want anybody to feel embarrassed so everybody would you just make your way towards the front and it's just Ryan up here playing. I don't expect him to lead a one-man show. What I want us to do is just cry out to God. There's some of you who know somebody's standing beside you, and you know what they've been going through. You know how long their winter has been. You just need to get a hold of them, and you need to pray. It's a simple message, but it's winter. And winter has a purpose.